Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of our channel Law Point. This is Shamal. India is a democratic country where citizens have freedom of speech. However, many a times this freedom is misused for tarnishing the reputation of others by false statements or through social media platforms. In such a scenario, one need not feel helpless as one can file a defamation suit. To know more about it, we have a Supreme Court of India's advocate on record, Mrs. Prasina Elizabeth Joseph, to discuss the defamation laws in India. According to the Constitution of India, the right to freedom of speech and expression is not an unfettered right, but it is subject to reasonable restrictions. One of the reasonable restrictions to freedom of speech and expression is defamation. Apart from this, Section 499 of the Indian Penal Code makes defamation a punishable offence. What is defamation? Defamation is an act of communicating false statements against a person which tarnishes the image of that person in the eyes of an ordinary man. For example, A talks to B that C is a lady of an immoral character when A clearly knows that C is not. Then in this case, the oral communication of A to B about C amounts to defamation. So any false statement published or spoken deliberately or intentionally or knowingly with an intention to damage someone else's reputation that amounts to defamation. A man's reputation is considered as his property and any damage to such reputation is punished under criminal law and compensated under civil law. Under criminal law, this intention to defame is necessary and this intention need to be proved beyond the shadow of reasonable doubt that this the act of defamation was made with an intention to lower the reputation of another in the eyes of a third party. Under criminal law, the punishment for defamation is a sentence of imprisonment for a period of two years or with fine or with both. Under civil law, instead of passing sentence of imprisonment, the court can award monetary compensation for causing defamation. There are two ways through which a person can make a defamatory statement. One is through oral communication that is called slander. If the defamation is caused by spoken words, sounds, sign language or gestures or like, then it is called slander. And another form is through writing or through pictures or by statue etc. which is called libel. Defamation through slander is a verbal form of defamation. It is addressed to the ear by being spoken defamation. It comes under civil wrong category only. Libel can also be called as a written defamation meant for the eye. It comes under both civil and criminal law category. In recent times, internet publications such as derogatory comments on social media can also constitute as libel. Until there is a special loss or damage caused to the person, a civil case of defamation cannot be filed in court. There are certain requirements while filing a defamation suit. First of all, presence of a defamatory statement is required. The defamatory content is calculated to tarnish the reputation of a person or class of persons and exposing them to hatred ridicule or contempt. The court consider whether a person is put to defamation is from looking into the ankle of a common ordinary prudent man. Secondly, the defamatory statement must be specifically to a person or class of persons. General statements like all lawyers are liars is too broad and no specific lawyer can take compensation for the same. So, there must be a link between the defamatory statement as well as the person concerned. Another important requirement of defamation is the defamatory statement must be made available to a third person. 
that means if a and b talk together and a accuses b of doing something falsely with respect to a particular thing here in this case there is no third party in front of whom the b's image is tarnished in this case there is no defamation another example is a writes a letter to b wherein false allegations against b is written and that too in a language unknown to b in this case when b takes the letter to c to read the letter for him now there is a case of defamation because a third party c is involved where the image of b is tarnished fourthly the defamatory statement must be false and injurious in nature the defamed person must be able to prove that how this false statement has tarnished their reputation and caused damage to them for example due to false allegation against a woman a woman lost her job then this is a clear case of defamation wherein she is able to prove that the allegation against her is false and she suffered a damage that is lost job the last criteria to constitute defamation is that the defamatory statement mm -hmm. must fall within the category of unprivileged in some cases even if the false statement has tarnished the image of a person then also it does not constitute defamation for example statements made in parliament or state legislatures are all privileged communications wherein in false allegations made by mps or mlas against a minister does not constitute defamation another instance is witness of court who incorrectly testify against a person or deposes wrongly against a person then he cannot be prosecuted for defamation but he can be prosecuted for another offense that he has stated wrong facts before the court that is called perjury thank you thank you for watching stay tuned